Welcome to this week's Monday Minutes. My name is Kelly. And my name is Jesse. And here we are to talk to you again about a really cool new feature that's coming in the release. And this is the ability to book items in the future. Um, this is a development that our friends at, at PTFS Europe have developed um, in coordination with some of our libraries here in the U.S., Cuyahoga County Public Library System, to really make this a reality. And we're excited to show you this because this can be really used for a lot of different things, whether you have a book club and you want to reserve some books in the future for them, or maybe you're working with teachers or faculty or professors that want to reserve some items for future semesters. Now you'll have the ability to do it. This is perfect. Okay, so let's get started, Jesse. Okay. Um, there's a couple of different steps that we'll go through. First, for staff, there is a permission that's called manage bookings. So for your staff to be able to work within the bookings module, they will need that permission. I'm going to go ahead and search the catalog for material that I would like to place on booking for the future. And going along with maybe just like an event going on in your library or mm -hmm. something you're putting to the side, you're going to pull up the record. And from the items tab, there is going to be a new option per item that you see here. If I scroll down a little bit, you'll see this bookable. So if you mark this, yes, bookable and update it, that means this specific barcode um, that's ending in 18233 can be booked. And if I wanted to do other ones, I could certainly do that. So if I hit view all, I can go ahead and make sure that I can make others bookable within the system. Once I've set one or many items to be booked, I am now going to see a place bookings at the top of the screen, as well as over on the left-hand side. So that's gonna always live there on both the top of the screen when an item is booked, marked booked, bookable, um, and it's gonna be here over on the left-hand side. The next step you're gonna go through is you're going to, in essence, place a booking. Just like in holds zero, you know that there's no bookings currently. I have this place booking, and then I can go ahead and assign this to a patron. Start typing in the patron's name. A pickup location can be allocated to say where this is gonna be picked up. And then I'm able to book any item attached to this record that has been marked bookable or a specific item. After that, then I'm going to go ahead and choose my booking window. So it's going to give me the ability to say, when do I want this item to be booked? And this is, again, really great because whether you're doing something in the future or not, this at least gives you the window to get a little bit further than what the traditional hold allows. Absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and hit submit. Now, once you have some bookings to appear on this, you are gonna see this little calendar view that lets you to kind of get a good look. I can imagine for libraries that have lots of items, this will be a great visual representation of what's going on and where these holds are, bookable holds are living. Now, the next step, once I have this, I'm just gonna click over to Henry's account and then a new option is going to live within their checkouts that you're able to see their existing booked items. So that's really fantastic. The last thing I wanna show is just if you attempt to check out an item that has been booked. So I'm gonna grab this item and then go ahead and, and check it out to myself just so you can kind of see the process that staff will see when they um, potentially try to check something out that's gonna go past that booked time period. Oh, perfect. So it's going to say, just so you know, there is a booking on the 10th and it's going to reduce it by default by a day. You can say yes, check out, or you can change that. And of course, this will be permission based whether you can or not um, override those restrictions, but then you can go yes, check out. And then that date will be the due date of the item. It will be the ninth. So you can see my data mining. And then over on the far right, it says it can't be renewed because it's booked. And just like with holds, I can go ahead and click that and see what exactly is going on with this material if I needed to.
Awesome. Now, Kelly, show us one last thing. How will staff be alerted or can they find a list of items that are bookable or made yeah. ready to ready to get for the booking? <laughs> ready to get for the booking. Yeah. You know, Jesse, as we all know, like these new features are slowly kind of evolving. So right now we do have a report that I'll share in the in the blog post just to show you what that um, report does. But I'm going to go ahead and hit that run just so you can see you can add a date. So maybe it's part of the you know circulation desk responsibility to be able to run this by a day or have that scheduled to somebody per day. But then mm -hmm. I'm able to see when these bookings are going to happen, start date, end date, those titles, and who in fact they're on um, booked, booked for. Awesome. I think this one's going to be a pretty big deal. What do you think? I, I love it. I'm super excited about it. And I'm super excited to see how libraries are going to use it. Library of things or whatever it may be. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, have a great week. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.